the trial of Steve Denuser, his wow lore legacy. A weekly reset. Okay. All right, let's see what... Uh, man, Denuser's done some things. Let me tell you, he's done some things. Let's see what they have to say about what he's done to the lore. Oh, there you are, Tally. I've been looking everywhere for you. What are you doing in Season of Discovery? Who knows, Evie? And that's the whole point, isn't it? Finally, we get to enjoy WoW without the spoilers, without the data mining, without all the guides and answers and hand-holding. Here, finally, is fresh WoW. Naked WoW. Awesome. Are you going to be a warlock tank? <laughs> Don't tell me what I can be, Evie. Don't spoil it. The whole point is discovery, okay? I'm discovering it. Is that what you did in phase one? I didn't play phase one because I was busy, but that just means I've got even more to discover now, doesn't it? It's like season of double discovery for me. Season of duo discovery. Sounds good. So, what's the plan? I don't know. You know, that's the magic, isn't it? I can go anywhere, do anything. Thing, confident that adventure is just around the corner. Yeah. yeah. You know, Wowhead has some really good guides on where all the moons and stuff are. Yeah, can you send those to me? Yeah. Knowledge is. Yeah, this is the problem, right? It's the problem with modern day Wow. That's why I feel like the vanilla will never really be, you know, classic will never really be vanilla. We didn't have that shit back then. It was literally you had to figure the game out by yourself, and that's why everyone sucked at the game for a very long time. Now the internet has changed that in a way where it's tough to, tough to not check those guides. It's power. Hello, hey, it's internet. Taliesin here, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Reset, Taliesin and Evertel's Wondrous Wisdom Show. In a week where it's it's been a while since the last week, actually, hasn't it? And that's not entirely our fault. Because I, I don't like to make thought, excuses, thought, yeah. and I don't like to bang on about IRL problems. But in fairness, we've got a big hole in our house, which is why you <laughs> never invite Sylvanas around for D&D. Because before you know it, she's ripping up the crown of domination, and all shit breaks loose. So... Sorry, but I really wanted to make this episode, even if it's a little tiny little bit late, because there's one particular piece of news that I very much want to discuss. So, things that have happened <laughs> since our last episode. Season of Discovery Phase 2 is, of course, underway in all its Blood Moon PvPing, Gnome Regan raiding glory. The Blood Moon, Love man. With its I want a freaking Blood Moon event in retail. I want an event where an entire zone goes into PvP madness, and obviously you could opt out of it. But man, it would be so cool if, if the entirety of the world just descended in one zone and just completely slaughter each other. Oh man, that would be amazing. Or, oh, or an encourage like reopening the gates. I don't know, some kind of world events. I love that stuff. Quest lines focused on self-love, which actually, you know, I thought I didn't really care about WoW holidays, especially love is in the air. But I have to say, that's a vibe I can really get behind right now. I needed that, honestly. Thanks. And this is like two weeks ago now, but don't worry, I'm going to just mention it really quick. Holly Lonsdale made her big announcement about the Mystery 10.2.6 Pirate Patch, which she uh, finally yes. revealed. Nothing. It would be staying a mystery, so f*** you. And don't get me wrong, this is very exciting. Possibly too exciting. Great. Possibly building a bit too much hype for a 2.6 patch, which left unchecked to fester and for another month of no expectation lowering real news might just reach a point where the actual 0.2.6 mini patch that happens can't possibly match the imagined 0.2.6 mega patch that the community has had time to imagine. But that's probably just me being paranoid since my ceiling collapsed. I'm sure that won't happen. When has anything like that ever happened? Yeah, see you in March the pirate patch, I suppose. No, <laughs> what I want to talk about today is World of Warcraft narrative director Steve Denuser and the news which he has since confirmed that after rumors first started circulating from his conspicuous absence at BlizzCon we now know that he has left Team 2 and Blizzard as he well. Gone. His LinkedIn profile having been updated to suggest that his employment with the company confirmed by himself ended in November last year. Which you play, I still think there's a fallout here I mean he blamed it on remote work. That was part of his reasoning. He said that, oh, going back to the office, it just wasn't for him. He didn't want to go back. So he left. But I think there was something more going on. I think Metzen came back. You know, there was a clashing of storytelling and how they wanted to take the direction they wanted to go. And maybe Metzen looked at the news and he was like, what the fuck did you do to my lore? What did you do to my lore? Yeah, remote work. <laughs> so uh, 
Yeah, I don't believe that. I think he was kind of pushed out. Make it around the time of BlizzCon. Now, this might seem like strange news for me to want to talk about. After all, thousands of people were just laid off from Activision Blizzard right. far more recently than this. And I certainly don't want to speculate too much or go digging for drama on this. But I think our job as WoW creators is to talk about the game, but also to document the game to some degree too. And the narrative director leaving, especially one whose time in charge of the story was so controversial yeah. in so many ways, added to the fact that it kind of slipped under the radar for so long, added to the fact that we are looking at such a bold new direction and focus on story and how it's told with the World Soul yeah, Saga, I mean, added to the fact that I- <laughs> How do you keep Steve Denuser around? It's just not possible, really. With Metzen coming back, Metzen, remember, came back in a role where he was supposed to be like an advisor for a while. And then he took on his, basically, his old role in an even bigger position, where he's basically overseeing the entirety of the story, and he's he's writing that shit, okay? He's doing it. So where do you put Denuser now? Well, you put him out on his ass, because uh, he doesn't really have a spot in the game, or in the, uh, in the making of the story anymore, right? And I like I said, I think Metzen looked back at what had happened in Shadowlands and what happened to Arthas and Sylvanas and all these characters that he'd built up over time and, like, completely ignoring the sword that he left behind. And he was just like, damn it, this shit done got screwed. All right, I'll fix it, but we got to get this guy out of here. Denuser, you're done. I personally Probably have happened. known that Steve left the company <laughs> for months and wanted to stay silent out of respect to him and my multiple sources within the company until it was more public knowledge. Meaning that, yes, actually, I absolutely am going to talk about Steve the Newser leaving the game. Because make no mistake, there will be large parts of the community that will be celebrating this yeah. news. The was were. one of the most maligned and controversial narrative leads in the game's history. And many players will see the end of his leadership as a liberation and a vindication of their criticisms of his work. And honestly, fair enough. If you hated Steve and want to say so, that's absolutely What's your up, right honey? and privilege as a consumer of online fantasy content. And this will be the perfect opportunity to do just that as we look back at some of the defining moments the of Denuser Steve legacy. Denuser's WoW career. The burning oh, of Teldrassil. Oh God, this buckle up guys. This is going to be really bad. You're going to see everything you hate about the game and realize it all belongs to one person. It doesn't happen too much anymore, but there was a point back in Battle for Azeroth where much of the hatred and bile directed towards Steve from the community was connected to the hatred that the community felt for the burning of Teldrassil's storyline that opened the expansion. <clears throat> lots of people hated this as a narrative concept, lots more hated the execution of it and the corner it painted Sylvanas and the Horde into for just yeah. about the entire expansion afterwards. And like I say, there was a time when and Steve got a lot of that ire directed specifically towards him. So just for the sake of completion here, no, <laughs> obviously, that's silly. He had nothing to do with the burning of Teldrassil. As a simple look at his old LinkedIn will tell I don't. Me. I don't think necessarily the burning of Teldrassil is what was bad. I mean, yeah, that was, that was a wild thing, but we were at war at the time. It was just the way it happened. Like Sylvanas making a rash decision... You know, after she talked with that elf, she got pissed off. She was PMSing. She's like, burn it. It just seemed, the whole thing seemed like very out of character for her, who was a war general for a long time. Led the undead. It seemed like to have a cool head for the most part. Unless Arthas showed up, right? That's what she would lose her shit. But otherwise, I mean, that just seems so out of character, so out of pocket for her to do it. <laughs> so when that event was wrong, revealed yeah. to the public, so it had already been in development for months, god, maybe a year by then, Denuza was a humble quest designer, actually working on Legion quests, that terrible expansion that everyone hates. Steve was made a lead narrative director after Alex of Frasiabi was moved off the team and eventually campus for being a creepy abuser man. So in the grand scheme of Denuza legacy criticism, it should be quite blame this uncontroversial on to call this unfair. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, whoa! Oh, Tally, is this whole section going to be a defense of Steve Denuser? Is this what I'm watching right now? And no, no, it's uh, it's not, I promise. Two, the Nathanos self-insert. So, you might have heard oh, this. Steve yeah. Denuser is a weird Sylvanas fanboy who wrote Nathanos as a self-insert so that he could oh, no. romance really? her or whatever. But this is like... This is the ultimate simp. He wanted, he, he wanted to fuck Sylvanas, so he wrote himself in the story. So he could fuck Sylvanas. Damn. 
I mean, we know Metzen. There's a, there's a meme out there. Metzen is Thrall, right? He wrote himself in. Metzen wrote himself in as Thrall. Denuser did nothing wrong. <laughs> we know Thrall is Metzen, and that's fine because, you know, he didn't write himself into the story. He just, he wants to tell a good story, a human story through an orc, and what better story to tell than his own because he is, in fact, a human. Okay, that makes sense. But Nathanos' storyline was so damn annoying he was just simping over Sylvanas the entire time. And then remember, he got sent to the Maw and <laughs> thinking Sylvanas is going to go find him. Bitch never found him. She just she just played with the, the Jailer the entire time. The big Jailer balls. That's what she was fondling while Nathanos' spirit was probably being tortured in the Maw. Nice. That's what a simp gets, I guess. Like, accepted fact. If you Google his name right now, it will not take you long to find people saying this about him. It being a topic that was repeated in some very successful videos from some much bigger creators than us. So basically any creator. And you must make up your own mind on this, of course, and how true it is. But first I would ask, is making self-inserts even a bad thing? If it is, then I hate to break this to you, but you are going to f hate the new yeah. head of WoW's story, Chris <laughs> Metzen. Is this even what Steve actually did? This entire thing is mostly based on basically three tweets from 2018. One where he is stood in front of the Sylvanas statue at Blizzard with the tagline, the war chief is pretty insistent, I get back to work. One where he says, day three, I returned to Ogrimmar to report on my progress. I complimented the war chief on her crimson gaze and asked how my own eyes might achieve a similar glow. I found her reply, discomforting and a tweet from when oh, wowhead geez. data mined the new nathanos model in the bfa data which oh, no. looks nothing like denuser where he said <laughs> it's like <laughs> he basically admits it he basically admits it yeah oh, the alarm just went. he basically admits it he was simping and he fucking created himself as nathanos yeah nice like looking into a dark mirror. Referencing, of course, the short story, Dark Mirror, that he wrote detailing how Nathanos got this new body, the body of his cousin. A dark mirror, of course, being a magical item which is supposed to reveal to the user secrets and hidden truths. And I mean, I'm just gonna be honest here, this is the flimsiest, most uncharitable, hating for the sake of it bullshit I have ever heard in my <laughs> entire life. Like seriously, this self-insert accusation was always bullshit. This was like, a man being enthusiastic about stories probably that he was true in charge of writing the kind of behavior we say we want and some of the yeah, shit pro that probably true but it doesn't mean the man wasn't a simp he was a simp he's caught for these three tweets is absolutely wild and absolutely unfair criticism but it does lead us into some much trickier areas. okay okay lead three. us tally sylvanas so steve was not in charge of the story when bfa was conceptualized and when the burning of teldrassil and sylvanas's part in it were decided on and set in motion but he was in charge soon after that. So all of the stuff that people hate about BFA, is that his fault? And this is a really tough one to call when you consider the now fairly well-documented BFA's history. We've got an entire video that goes into this subject in a lot more detail, but first-hand accounts from inside the team at the time paint a picture of Alex Afrasiabi, the, the creepy abuser man, right. being dead set on the Sylvanas villain arc, which he started with Teldrassil and was yeah. due to end with her death at some point. This was an idea that wasn't particularly well planned out or popular. Yeah, in DJ, the this is what you were talking about. They, that uh, Originally, they wanted to kill her. They wanted to start a villain arc and she you know, becomes a raid boss and we kill her. Now, that's not what happened and it's because everyone decided against it. And Alex shortly thereafter was let go or pushed off to another team. So was this Denuser's writing too? I don't know. The team at large. Seems like he was kind of left with a shit bag. Then, when Afrasiabi was finally thrown out for his creepy abuser shit, yeah, the team were not just messed with that huge mess of a plot to sort out in BFA, but were also apparently told by Blizzard leadership that the planned endpoint, Sylvanas' death, was categorically not allowed to happen. She was just considered too valuable to the franchise monetarily. And so now they have this character on the most Makes villain sense. of villain arcs who they were. Although you killed Arthas Menethil. I mean, but, but that, that that's supposed to happen. He was legitimately a villain. So I get it. Yeah, don't kill Sylvanas. Okay. Allowed to kill. And honestly, don't if that's kill the true, undead girl. and it definitely is, then 
I'm overall pretty sympathetic to the job that the team managed. There's stuff that I really don't like. The fact that BFA ends with us still not knowing who she's working with. I mean, let's the... be honest. If they did kill off Sylvanas, where would all the goth chick emo girls go in the game? You know, like, they're the, who are they going to look to, you know, to lead them? To be the Dark Ranger selves they've always wanted to be. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Because those girls, you, you got to have them in the game. You need them. They're one of the few demographics of women that still play this game. So yeah, you can't kill her off. Sure. Biggest issue in BFA's story, in my opinion, and the lack of context <laughs> given to her relationship with the Jailer the in game in. during Shadowlands, one of the main narrative problems in that expansion. But there are other things, the Loyalist and Sourfang Rebel Choice quest, well, I don't know if we have the a relationship memo on between that. Sylvanas and Anduin in the Shadowlands cinematics, which I think they did a good job on. And I also think that the ending that, that they managed to that arc with the trial of Sylvanas and her banishment to the moor, both in concept and execution was a way better resolution than they had any right to be given the circumstances. Can I just say one thing real quick? Uh, Taronda, everyone thinks is hot. Of course she is, but Sylvanas is hotter. Like if I'm if I'm looking at them and I'm picking a team, I'm going Team Sylvanas. She's definitely the hotter one of the two. I think that's genuinely good. There's no, no denying is. though that this whole Sylvanas period all the way. Yeah. is a yeah. bleak and not fondly remembered one in WoW lore. Like I say, you must make up your own mind. <laughs> For this one, I think I'm going to choose to be reasonably charitable and on the weight of evidence, give Steve the benefit of the doubt and say it probably wasn't his fault. It was a no win. In rugby, we call it a hospital pass. I'm going to let him off this one. But it does bring up another criticism for <laughs> yeah, still both story yeah, outside the game. This is one of those criticisms that Denuza is most singled out for. The habit of putting important story not in the game where everyone can see it, but in outside media, mostly novels. And this is yeah. of course something that wow. And I think they're getting they're drifting away from this. We just talked about it this morning, the release of the new short stories that they will we will get for the war within. And uh, it's not a full-blown novel like we've been getting lately. So it looks like they want to tell the story more in game, which makes so much more sense. That's how it should be. We shouldn't have to read outside content to understand what the hell is going on in the game. And uh, so it looks like those days of the big novel pre-release before the expansion are gone, which is good. Has always done, and I think the most egregious example Team is Sally War White, Crimes, yeah, that's a good where the whole too. reason and explanation for why Warlords of Draenor even happened was published exclusively in those pages. It's wild. It's like if you didn't read that book, then one day you just woke up in game. Garrosh has escaped. We all hate Rathian now. The Dark Portal has just opened, but it's a different color. And orcs from 30 years ago, and also an alternate timeline, were pouring through intent on domination. And I'm sorry, but if Wad's entire yeah. existence wasn't dumb enough from a story point of view anyway, to then not even explain it to 90% of players was insane. Now, as far as novels go, Danusa's reign never gets this bad. Shadows Rising is actually kind of the perfect pre-expansion novel. No important plot it hurts to miss. A fun romp with some characters you like. Yeah. It's great. The Sylvan the, the, the Sylvanas one's fine. The one that was really bad to me was the uh, pre- um uh bfa the pre-bfa book was insanely important to the storyline and it actually has like things that were put in the game like the graveyard and all that it, they were put into the game post that whole human undead meeting between sylvanas and anduin and freaking you have calia menethil who shows up and is killed off screen like that would have been such a big cinematic moment in the game she's killed in a book we never even see it happen that's way too important to happen outside the game that was a big mistake Anna's novel, though, and she's so resurrected much. by the light. All happens in the book. Never see it in the game. Not only does this book give important context and explanation to in-game events that you otherwise wouldn't know, but also the entire thing came out a year too late. It explains Sylvanas' relationship with the Jailer and why she follows him a lot better than the game ever manages. Now, I think the why is explained in game two. I certainly understood her emotional justification. She pretty much just says it to Anduin in those cinematics that I like. The thing that we really miss in game is the details around how Sylvanas and the Jailer met or like any interaction yeah. between them really. There is none of it in game. It is all in the novel. 
It's not ideal. I'm going to call that a fail for Denuza, for sure. But those aren't the only out-of-game media that he worked on. Oh, no. Five, the Titan's point of view. You know, this might even go down as Steve's biggest legacy in terms of what? lore. The recontextualizing of the Chronicle books from omnipotent uh, yeah, yeah. word of God to an account from the Titan's point of view. People are still outraged by this today, saying how it invalidates everything in those three books as being potentially fallible. And I am sympathetic yeah. to that complaint. I genuinely am. You are not wrong if that's your opinion on Chronicle. Personally, my personal opinion on this personally is that it's better this way? For me, it's more interesting to have the account it of the too. Titan's actions by their watchers and what indeed up, just by the historians of Azeroth be potentially questionable. If not wrong, then just seen from a certain bias and point of view. I just... This did shake up the lore quite a lot because the Chronicle was essentially like, if it's in Chronicle, it is, you know, uh, valid, it is true, and it is uh, canonized as official wild lore. And once that Titan perspective thing, that whole shit came in, it kind of made you think, well, like, we don't know anything then. Nothing is true. Nothing we know is true. It's all told from the Titan perspective. And we are realizing that the Titans are actually kind of fucked up. They're kind of messed up, right? So not only are we finding out that they wrote the story, which would be fine if they were like these omnipotent, all good, all knowing beings, but they're not. We realize they're not. So now it's like, oh, my God, Chronicle's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, that kind of did screw things up find that interesting. It gives us fun things like the Broker Cosmology chart from the Shadowlands Grimoire, which appears to contradict the Chronicle version, but is actually the same chart seen from an opposite viewpoint. We go over that in one of my legit oh, favorite shit, that's videos crazy. that we have ever made. I just like it. Damn, I what the hell? What a, what a crazy realization contradict the chronicle version but it's it. actually the same chart seen from the opposite viewpoint we go over that in one Amazing. of my legit favorite videos that we have oh, what ever a big made discovery. i just like it and it appears to be the idea that the world soul saga is running with too so it is a legacy that will impact the story for a generation after steve has now left i'd actually call that a low-key i don't, I don't think i did watch that video that's fair it. six there was that time on twitter when he said he liked the conclusion of game of thrones season eight and is therefore obviously complete. yeah god no no th this was the moment they should have fired him on the spot for this tweet 28 likes who are these people him and these 28 people need to go he liked the ending of game of thrones game of thrones was one of my favorite series of all time until that end why <sighs> didn't those guys leave to like direct star wars and then they didn't even end up doing that i don't know man it was really bad this is a really bad take the idiot who should not be trusted with any story really bad anywhere and like okay like really, i'm not even harsh i'm like not even a harsh judger of shows you could do the stupidest shit in a show and i'm fine with it but that ending just was so e even the way even the way they killed the uh uh what's his name the ice king or whatever the hell his name was why why the battle was so epic and then you just uh, dagger him in the in the stomach and it's done all that build up the TV that battle should have been I like three sucks. episodes I've seen long. Twitter. I've seen you on Twitter. Some of you like some dog shit. Loads of you probably like Lost, and I'm not going to hold that against you, even though you are definitely wrong because Lost sucks. But I don't think you can't write a good story just because you like Lost. I just think lots of people like trash sometimes, and it's not a reflection on <laughs> their life or their work beyond that. Seven, Shadowland. To be fair, I feel like a lot of shows have a really hard time wrapping up their story and, and having a good ending. I'll be honest with that one. Like, it's it's tough sometimes to end a story properly, to close it out and everyone's satisfied. Uh, very few shows have done it. I've always heard Sopranos, not a good ending. Uh, obviously, Game of Thrones, not a good ending. You know what did have a good ending? Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad was a show that I watched, and I thought it had a great ending. That was a good show. And that was a good just... show. Shadowlands. Okay, so BFA wasn't really Steve's fault, according to me. What about the expansion after? 
Shadowlands. People hate the lore in that expansion. I've got to be honest. It's terrible tech. I don't blame them for that either. There's stuff that I like, as I said before, but the lore in this expansion is a complete mess. No one seems to have a handle on it. I've yeah. said before, but I think it's, it's biggest like problem written. is that the Shadowlands probably shouldn't have been an expansion setting because you then have to introduce way more visual and tonal variety to it than the Shadowlands should have had. Like the Shadowlands, it's, it's, it's gray. There's ghosts in it. Do Revendreth yeah. and Maldraxxus? Spiky dildos everywhere. Yeah, the Shadowlands lore is still like, what the hell was that? We're still trying to figure it out. And Bastion and Arden will look cool and have interesting characters? Yes. Should they have been a part of the very one note, it's just a bit gray with ghosts in Shadowlands? No, no, yeah. it's a conceptual fail, which... I don't think it's down to Steve. I'm. It, it looked fine, yeah. The art team always does well. The art team always does well. Where the ball was dropped was the main storyline, the Jailer being a good villain. He just wasn't. Uh, what happened with Arthas and them trying to attach him to the Lich King just to make him cool, that didn't work out very well, and then they ruined the Lich King lore. It's a lot of bad. A lot of bad things. The villain, basically, the villain arc was the worst part about Shadowlands, and that's what ruined it. Barely certain Also, that Torghast was kind of shit was decided before he took the reins but ah, still trying to figure out what is to come yeah you exactly. absolutely can blame him for like the jailer huge missed opportunity very boring bad guy unsatisfying the biggest unexplored problem. i don't care if the main focus was intended to be anduin sylvanas we needed a lot more of an engaging antagonist than this zoval absolutely yeah, sure. is something steve would have had creative sway and decisions over this is a big big fail for him as far as i'm concerned as is the mess of shadowlands law in general now i'm willing to be quite forgiving with this expansion because like and if you remember, there was a worldwide epidemic and they were still sorting out the Sylvanas mess. But I yeah. do think introducing... My man, my man was working from home, right? That's when he was happiest. <laughs> he claims that he left because he couldn't work from home anymore. Shadowlands was his golden era. ...wide epidemic and they were still sorting out the Sylvanas mess. But I do think introducing so much reference and recontextualization to old Warcraft 3 lore was a mistake you can do it well but there was so much of it and people were always going to hate it i yeah. actually love arthas's final fate but i know i'm in the minority there i am not oh, pissing no. on your arthas body pillow i promise i think yeah, the I most don't like damning it. thing you can say is that you get the feeling shadowlands is going to be referenced the absolute least out of any past expansion in future installments like yeah. you feel they're just gonna try and ignore most of it and i don't blame them honestly eight <laughs> dragonflight this is a tough one dragonflight has come in for some passionate criticism here's the thing here's the thing dragonflight is a great expansion i will remember dragonflight fondly i think it was very good the dungeons were good the raids were good i really enjoyed it a lot in terms of like playing the game enjoying the the core mechanics of the game were done well dragon riding awesome uh, the Dragon Isles were cool. Eh, Drag the Arrow, okay, they're fine. They're good. They're a decent addition to the game. But the worst part about Dragonflight is the part that this man is responsible for: the story. Yeah, it's too. It's too much heartfelt. I'm gonna be your friend. Let's let's you know. Let's tangle our tails together in a in a in a pillow body bag or something. I don't know. It's just way too much lovey dovey crap. Eridicron. Viranath and Farak are probably the best parts about Dragonflight. You know, those stories were, were decent. Farak, I feel like, kind of got the short end of the stick. It could have been better. I don't like the way we just killed him off like that. But um, Eridicron seems like to be a good villain. Seems to be a well-written villain for the most part. But uh, overall, I mean, Denuser's the one who kind of... He, he is the weak link in the Dragonflight expansion for its writing recently and plenty of it i think is justified but my main problem when it comes to dragonflight's writing is on the level of sometimes i literally just don't like the words that have been written and steve was the narrative lead on dragonflight he pitched the concept of the expansion out of every game that we've been talking about here dragonflight is, is the, the most one, responsible but from for start it, yeah. to finish was his vision and the buck stops with him steve will have ultimately okayed every single line in dragonflight which i think is clunky or crazy and he deserves criticism for that, but ultimately, yeah, Mr. it's not great, his very writing. I generally like the themes and story beats of Dragonflight, which you'd imagine are much more than narrative director's actual job. So 
I think I like his work on this expansion. Like, great example, okay? The dialogue in the Amirgisil end cinematic is not good. It's we horrible. all know that. But the thing that's happening here... I just the don't... Aspects... I, there's something I don't get, is that Viranath was Farak's, like, sister, essentially. Right? Like, they were siblings. He's lying there, dead, on the ground. She knows that Eridacron had somewhat betrayed him and allowed him to be corrupted by the Void and all that stuff. Farak was already unhinged. But you basically led him down a path where this was going to be his ending. Like, she knew that. And she had no emotion towards it. Like, I don't even care about emotion in the game. I don't want a more emotional game. We already got enough of that shit. Got our first on-screen kiss and everything that we talked about yesterday. But it's just, it's a, it's a natural thing. Like, oh, shit, you just killed my bro. Oh, damn, like, how could this, you know, fuck Eridicron for what he did to us. He betrayed us kind of thing. Like, he led us down a path that he wasn't being honest with us about what he was doing. That's fine. She could have gotten angry, you know, a little bit sad than anger. That would have been cool. But instead, it's like she doesn't even acknowledge it. She's just like, oh, yeah, I'm with this new crew. Screw that. Screw my dead brother. I got my new, I got my new dragons here. Getting blessed by Completely a major cell? The actual story? That's cool. Then That's a good story beat. And if we blame him for the jailer, night. as we should, then I guess we should probably credit Is there, there no, no one else? else? Is there no one else? Thank you, Achilles, for the sub, man. 15 months. Thank him you so much. Primal Incarnate Death Knight and Eridicron, who are great baddies. Generally, I think people really like the side stories in this expansion, too. And if we can criticize him for badly written quests that he didn't write, which I think we should, then perhaps we should give him credit for good quests that he didn't write as well. And for being a lead that facilitates his team and creates an environment to flourish. I don't know. I feel like we're still a little bit close to this one, and the picture will definitely become clearer in the coming years like it did with BFA and Shadowlands. But I'm going to tentatively yeah. say that for now, overall, despite the lost momentum in Act 2 and the lack of overall stakes, something I think will probably seem a bit less like a problem in future expansions when we see Dragonflight as, you know, when Eridicron started everything rolling. I'm going to say that overall, I think his work on Dragonflight is a success. You may disagree. That's fine too. This is all pretty subjective. I'm going to finish this analysis of his legacy with this. There's no doubt that Steve Nusa came into the job at probably the most challenging point in WoW's history, story-wise. I think he and the rest of the team absolutely nailed some aspects of that cleanup, badly misfired on others. And I guess I've got yeah, a bias because I've it. always liked Steve on a personal level. I feel like a lot of the attacks made on him were incredibly unfair and personal and not the kind of thing that we should encourage in yeah, any Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I, do, I agree with Taliesin here. I don't think we should have personally attacked the man, like uh, so, uh, insult his intellect and talk shit about him personally or so we don't like his goatee or something because of the shit he's written. No. You just, you can literally say, you know, very, keep it very simple. I don't like what he's done with the World of Warcraft storyline. That's it. It's not, it's not a hit on him. He took it in a certain direction. I don't like the direction he took it in. There you go. Not personal. Doesn't mean anything. Am I glad that he's, uh, you know, he's gone? Yeah, I think, you know, he, I didn't like what he was doing with the game. Uh, you know, uh, and I also, there's the same thing where he got paid very well. So I'm not too worried about his well-being, the fact that he lost his job. He'll be okay. But uh, I didn't want him writing the Warcraft story anymore. That's for sure. Unity of grown ups. Yeah, could be a good guy. Whatsoever. Definitely. Also, if it's true, what I've heard that he wasn't treated very well by Blizzard. Yeah, you're allowed to personally end. attack me. I know yeah, he doesn't say right. that, but it's it's something I've heard. Then that also completely sucks. Because I'm sorry, he deserved better. Because any employee deserves better than to be dicked around by a multinational corporation. I'm very <laughs> excited about WoW's sure. new narrative direction under Metzen and Terran Gregory, and the whole concept of the World Soul yeah, Saga perfect, just presses all my buttons. So I don't know, maybe that's put me in a good mood. But if we are summing up. Steve's legacy, I'm going to choose to remember him as the guy who had to do a lot of firefighting over the course of four or five years. Was part of a team that undoubtedly righted the very off-course ship that was World of Warcraft and helped lay the foundations for hopefully more optimistic times to come. You know, yeah. if WoW recovers yeah. or even flourishes... I the feel like Metzen kind of laid the foundation leading up to the sword being put into the planet. And then Denuser started to build, like, you know, like he gave him some blueprints, and then Denuser started to build something that's completely off topic. He was building on the foundation, but the shit he was building was kind of scuffed. Like, what are you doing? We were supposed to build a, the hotel right here and the restaurant right here, and you flipped them around, or you're doing something. You decide to build a massage parlor. Why are you doing that? Like, that's what I feel like he did. So now we have this massage parlor sitting where the restaurant and the hotel were supposed to be, and we're just going to kind of ignore it. That's Shadowlands. 
or just okay it's there it happened you know maybe you guys can use it sometimes you know get your happy endings but at the end of the day we're just gonna move on we're gonna build the shit we're supposed to build over here over here and it's gonna be good we're gonna we're gonna be fine everyone's gonna be okay that's kind of how i see it not necessarily that he helped build the foundation because i don't think he did World Soul Saga, we are going to look back at Dragonfly as being probably the most important expansion in WoW's history. And yeah, obviously that comes from mechanics and instances and things as well, but it was Steve's thing. There's lots that happened under his watch that I think is dumb or bad or actually just kind of offensive. But I can say that about the absolute greats too, so whatever. I'm very glad it's yeah. finally all public and all the streamers can stop skirting around it when people bring it up in chat and we can all finally start looking forwards again because call me an old softy shill, but I'm really optimistic about what comes next i am too i was thinking there's not really much point of the sofa too. bit anymore is there because we have the podcast for all of that it's true i mean i know we don't sit on the sofa for the podcast like we do here like no. we are right now at this very moment sitting on the sofa though like it's true and we spend two hours doing it but it would be a shame to lose the sofa bit because you know the sofa's so comfy uh, yes <laughs> but there was something special that you wanted to say today wasn't there on this particular episode and the stickers are pretty yeah, good yeah could you well, no, everyone thinks you're pregnant. Just because that's Can like... I just say, <laughs> people think that every like every week, every week someone's like, "Well, I think that color, I know blue, what Avatar's going to talk about." Well, jokes on you because it's never happening they, they, again. They usually say something. They usually say something like, "Wow." I think we all know that Evie's pregnant because she looks terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did a little poll uh, for our patrons recently. Thank you, patrons. There's lots of very useful feedback, specifically for patrons, but for the channel, uh, resoundingly, people were like, hey, uh, we'd like to see the weekly reset more regularly. <laughs> like like, like on a weekly basis. Weekly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and do you know what? That's a fair point, which sounds like a joke, sounds like a meme, but the interesting, one of the really interesting responses I found was like, look, we'd really appreciate uh, a, a weekly reset kind of like update every week even if there's basically nothing to talk about even if the episode is only yeah, like that's what six I do. minutes long yeah, or something like that just to kind of be I pump there. out content yeah, exactly. even when there's no content like, okay, there you this go. is what's going on sort of thing I make shit up the whole uh, kit and caboodle yeah. um, although we are getting back into the kit and caboodle now yeah, with our amazing green screen and the caboodle very happy with very that good. Um, yeah so so, but and that was a really interesting response that really made me think mm -hmm. and was like yeah okay so I took that on board and I I am giving you now stand into an announcement for me. Yes. I'm pregnant. Yes, um, Pepe, exactly. <laughs> we decided that uh, from here yeah. on in to make a, a a proper dedicated commitment to a weekly reset every week, even if it is. They have to realize it's not about quality. It's about quantity. I put tons of shit out every day. Garbage, complete trash, some of the worst content the internet has ever seen. But I am committed to just pumping it out. I will I will just shoot that shit out onto the internet. I don't care. That's how I roll. Like just a, Same a kind of quality baby. Update. Exactly. So even if it's like a dead news week, even if no one is playing the game, even if like nothing Copy is content, happening yeah, of sure. interest, we are still Copy gonna sit down too. in front of the camera Copy and give an update. So you yeah. can count on that like every week something will come out of us weekly reset commitment yeah. commitment every week i'm as committed to this as i am my marriage and look we're still Just here like the wild years, so hey. i'm obviously yeah. doing okay there okay. i will do as well with the weekly reset weekly reset of course older than our marriage yes yeah, true we should older give it the care children. and love that it's it deserves the child <laughs> yeah. in this relationship how is love in the in, in love is in the air Oh, I loved it. <laughs> Absolutely loved to love it. It's over now. I never do holidays. I just, I just, they've never appealed to me. Uh, but this one, for whatever reason, like I jumped in and I absolutely loved it. In part because I wanted to fill up my travel. I think my favorite is always the stuff, Halloween. Which happened like instantly. It's always my favorite in the game. Because holiday. The 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 holiday was great. It was really good. I loved zooming around and going like visiting old locations. I thought I thought it was a really good way of like revive bringing to life the world uh, in a way that Holly kind of was talking about in her in her announcement. Like kind of re. Brewfest uh, is fun. You know, I have not done it actually. Bits that we haven't seen before. Um, I had a really good time and I loved it. And props to the writers for putting in uh, Valentine's, sorry, Love is Sam in the Air walk around and not be that are not like couple focused, that are just like, you know what you need? Love yourself. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. no, actually like really, really good. I'm yeah. more tempted to kind of check out other holidays from now on in. Same, so, yeah. same. Looking forward to it, Holly. Thanks, Holly. Holidays. Oh! 
Oh, thanks wow. for joining us today. Wow. If you like this video, don't thank us. Thank our patrons who still give their real still. life money to make all of our work yeah. happen. Patrons, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your amazing answers. Thank you for inspiring us. As you did Seriously. with the Weekly Reset when we first conceived of it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Weekly Reset was named by our patrons. It was. If you didn't like it, downvote the shit out of it. And remember, my yes. name is Holly Longdale. Oh. It's about time she got taken down a peg or two. Never. Send her our hate. <laughs> and make hate, hate meant for us. No, never. She's an and if you've got anything nice to say about Holly, uh, write in the comments on our video down here. <laughs> Let's just do a little swap like Freaky Friday. <laughs> just for a little bit. I just want to be Holly Longdale just for one day. I just want to live are. that life. Yeah. And she can be me for a day. See, what, see how she likes that. <laughs> see how much she loves WoW at the end of that. <laughs> Yeah, Whoa. good stuff. Good. What the hell? Whoa. I got double a freaking ad playing. Yeah, no, great video. Great video. It was a lot of fun to watch. I agree with a lot of the message in here. You know, um, will I ever forgive Denuser for what he did to uh, Arthas? No. That lore has forever somewhat tarnished because of what he did. I will choose to ignore the shit that he did. And that's how I forgive him. But to attack him as a person, I mean, it was just his job, and uh, he didn't do the best job at his job. It happens.